Let's face it, coding has changed a lot. When I first decided to study computer science in 2015, I did so not only because software engineers make a lot of money, but because there was a lot of opportunity at the time. At that time, every single company was transitioning into becoming a tech company, building their online presence through social media and building apps and websites, which would require engineers to run. It really seemed like there was infinite opportunity and it was really easy to land internships and engineering positions. But nowadays, it's a lot more competitive. Last year, we saw major layoffs across the entire tech industry. This could have been due to overhiring, the current state of the economy, advancements in technologies, but it's really all speculation. What we do know for a fact is that the number of open tech jobs is way down from its all-time peak by almost 60%. The job market is oversaturated and developers are struggling to find employment. When we shifted to work from home, a lot of people took up coding, and it's really popularly known now on the internet that software engineers make six figures and you can do it from your bedroom. So developers are now not only competing with all of these new programmers, but they're also competing with all of these experienced engineers that got laid off. So is all hope lost when it comes to getting a tech job? Absolutely not. Computer programming jobs still have some of the lowest unemployment rates. And while we are way down from the all-time high of number of open tech jobs, we are recovering slightly now. And this is because the programming job market fluctuates. There's going to be highs, there's going to be lows, but learning to code is still a really high value skill. The question we need to be asking ourselves is how do we stand out in the current job market? And the truth is to be a competitive candidate nowadays, just learning to code isn't enough. But there are steps that you can take to make yourself a much more competitive candidate in today's job market. And the first step is, of course, learning the code. You're going to need to learn a programming language. You're going to need to know how to build software. You're going to need to know data structures, algorithms. You're going to need to know the fundamentals. This is just basic knowledge nowadays. But the great thing about this is that learning to code is also easier than ever. There are more online resources than ever right now. And in my opinion, it's easier to learn how to code on the internet than it is through a structured curriculum at a university. Speaking of online resources, if you're trying to learn how to code, you should definitely check out the sponsor of this video, Zero Two Mastery. This is a platform I've collaborated with multiple times because I get such good feedback about the platform. It's a platform with dozens of courses and online resources to help people learn how to code and to get hired. Zero to Mastery has courses for every step of your career, whether you're a beginner learning how to code, whether you're trying to get hired, or you're a professional trying to advance your skill set. They've really got courses for whatever field of programming you're interested, whatever you're trying to learn, whether that's web development, machine learning, web three, cloud engineering, cybersecurity, or they've even got courses if you just want to work on your soft skills. They've got world-class instructors and over a million students have either enrolled or graduated from their courses. One of the coolest things they do is a career path quiz, which based on your current skill set and your career goals, they'll recommend a path of learning for you. They have monthly and annual memberships, and if you click the link in the description, you'll even get a discount. And the platform was actually made by a self-taught developer. So if you want to teach yourself to learn how to code, check out Zero to Mastery. So once you've learned how to code, the next thing you'll want to do is pick a niche or specialize in a specific field of programming. Over the past few years, a lot of people have pushed this narrative that it's really easy to get hired as a software engineer, and all you have to do is pick up web development, build some projects, and then start applying. And while that may have been true a couple years ago, the job market is a little bit more competitive. So if everybody knows how to build React.js web apps, it might be a smart idea to pick a different niche or a different field of programming to go into. While web development is still a great career path, you might find more success in the industry if you pick a different programming field that is in demand, but not that many people are pursuing. This could be something like mobile development, data science, cybersecurity, DevOps, or even cloud computing. Specializing in a particular skill set that's in demand, but not a lot of other people have, will make you a more desirable candidate. The next thing that's almost essential nowadays is building a developer brand. Building a developer brand has become so important now because everything's online and these companies want proof that you're a competent programmer. Developer brand is simple. It just comes down to highlighting all of your positive characteristics and then showcasing your skill set. You can do this through things like social media, posting your content, showcasing your skills, building an impressive GitHub profile, or just building a really great developer portfolio. 
It's really important nowadays to have a great LinkedIn profile. You should have a professional headshot. You should be connecting with all of your peers and people you've worked with in the past. You definitely should have a high quality resume. You should put all your projects on GitHub, make contributions on GitHub, show that you're active as a programmer. And then developer portfolio, in my opinion, is the biggest representation of you as a programmer. This is where you have full control to showcase all your skill sets in a centralized location. You could put all of those components, your GitHub, your resume, your projects, and you can build the portfolio and showcase that you know how to build a nice website. The more companies can look you up and find things that prove that you're a competent programmer, the better. The next thing that's essential nowadays is networking. In a lot of cases now, I'm seeing examples of people sending out hundreds, if not thousands of applications and getting no responses over and over and over. And I think a lot of people that are actually getting tech jobs now are getting them through their network. Now, obviously having a good network doesn't automatically get you the job. Most of the time there's gonna be an interview process that you have to go through, but it does get you that foot in the door. Through growing your network, this is where you're also gonna hear about a lot of the best opportunities. And knowing reputable engineers that can attest to your skill set is extremely valuable when you're trying to get hired. Networking used to be one of the main reasons that people went to college, but nowadays it's so much easier because of social media. It's really easy to connect with developers on platforms like LinkedIn and Twitter and join joining programming communities on Discord. And all of the developer communities online are really welcoming and positive. And speaking of developer communities, me and three other coding YouTubers, Kevin Naughton Jr., Kenny Gunderman, and Tech with Tim, we just started a free coding community you guys can join. I'll link it in the description, but it's great. We've got like 5,000 members, everybody's networking, everyone's trying to improve their skills and support each other and motivate each other. So I highly recommend joining that if you're interested in joining a developer community. And then the last thing you need to do to stay competitive in the job market, and every programmer needs to do this in general, is continuously learn and stay up to date with popular trends and technologies. You should absolutely be familiar with technologies like AI assistance or no code platforms at this point. And if you don't, and you're not staying up to date with these emerging technologies, then you may get left behind. The information you know now can become outdated. You know, people used to program computers using switches, then they developed assembly code, then they developed C and then they develop Python. And if you're not staying up to date with current technologies, then you're not going to be developing software at the current standard and you're not going to get hired. This doesn't mean that you have to be some kind of tech hype beast learning every single new technology that comes out, but you should be continuously learning, putting some time aside, learning new things. And when things are overwhelmingly helpful and everybody is using them and it's clearly an important trend, then you should look into those specific technologies and get comfortable with them. And just for an example, ChatGPT. If you're a programmer that hasn't used ChatGPT yet, what are you doing? Now, all of the steps I've covered in this video to be competitive in the job market, I've covered before in other videos. The difference being a couple years ago, some of these were optional. And today to be a competitive candidate in the job market, these are all required. It's not as simple as learning how to code, building a couple projects and spamming applications to get hired. While that might've worked a couple years ago, I don't think it's working as well nowadays. So you need to have that developer brand. You need to showcase your skills. You need that network to help you navigate the industry. And you really should specialize in something and develop skills that other people don't have. It may sound like a much more tedious and difficult process to become a software engineer nowadays, but it's not necessarily true. This is because things like ChatGPT have completely broken the barrier there was before to become a developer. There may be way more developers than there ever was right now, but there's also way more online resources and there's way more tools to help you level up your skill set and learn how to code. There's one last thing I could say. It seems like there's a lot of negative content being pushed about the job market, getting a tech job, and even learning how to code in general. But if you go into learning how to code and trying to get a job with a negative mindset, that will only hold you back. It's the people that remain optimistic and hopeful and challenge themselves and overcome those challenges. Those are the people that are going to succeed and those are the people that will get hired as software engineers. So just keep pushing, learning, develop your skills and figure out how you can promote yourself as a developer. And that's really gonna help you in the long run with landing a full-time role. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.